Index funds were one of the biggest things to happen in investing in over 100 years. And Vanguard is a global leader in index funds and ETFs, with now over 6 trillion in assets under management, which basically means other people's money. Put them both together and you have a very powerful and profitable combination for investors. Welcome back guys, Nathan here, and we're going to take a closer look at the Vanguard index funds and ETFs. However, before we jump in and take a look at specific index funds, we do need to take a look at the big picture of what it is we're actually trying to do with index funds. So in this video, I'll be going over the index fund strategy of what it is we're actually trying to do. We'll take a look at the importance of fees and how fees can kill your gains. We'll take a look at how to choose a good index fund or ETF and what you should avoid. And then we'll finish with a little bonus. I'll show you the index fund choices from some top YouTube finance channels. I have included some timestamps below so you can jump to different parts of the video, but I do recommend watching it through at least once because I'll be covering some very important information for index fund investors. I'm going to assume that everybody watching this video does know what an index fund is. If you don't, I have created a full video here, which I'll also link in the description below. So if you don't know what an index fund is, watch that first. If you find anything in this video useful, be sure to click that like button. It would be much appreciated and every like does help. Okay, sit back and relax. Here is what you need to know about Vanguard index funds and ETFs. So here is what we've got coming up. We'll be looking at the index fund strategy, how fees kill your gains, the best Vanguard index funds and ETFs, and then we'll finish, we're looking at some top finance channels and see which index funds they have chose themselves. Quick disclaimer. This video is for education purposes only. You should seek investment advice from a registered professional before making any investment decision. This video is not responsible for any investment actions taken by its viewers. First up, the index fund strategy. So essentially what we're trying to do is build wealth through compounding. So here is a chart and it shows that if you invested 50,000 pounds and it was growing at 10% per year, which has been the S&P 500's average over the long term, then after 30 years, your 50,000 will have turned into over a million. And you can play around with these calculators, invest a bit more, invest a bit less, increase the return, lower the return. Let's take a look at a couple more just to give you perspective. So this time, if we're only investing 25,000 pounds and it's still growing at 10%, then it's gonna take 40 years to get past the million pound mark. And finally, if you can invest a bit more, and invest over a hundred thousand pounds and it's growing at 10 percent then it's only going to take you 25 years to get past the one million pound mark but you can see the general theme here is that it's a long-term investment using compounding how fees kill your gains so here is a calculator again, and we've still got 50,000 pounds, and we're doing it over 32 years, growing at 10% like we saw, but this time we're adding a annual charge of 2%. And 2% is the average mutual fund. So if you weren't doing this yourself, if you were going through an investment company or an individual financial advisor, the average fund they're gonna put you in charges 2%. And now look what happens. After 32 years, you'd only have 586,000, so just over half a million. And look how much you're paying in fees, 468,000 pounds. Now let's compare this to an index fund. And an index fund is pretty much DIY. You're doing it yourself. You're taking your investments on yourself. Same thing, 50,000 pounds over 32 years growing at 10%, but this time, we have an annual charge of 0.1%, which is what a lot of index funds charge. 
Now look at the difference. This time you've got over a million pound in your fund and you've only lost 30,000 to fees. So this is almost twice as good. So in summary, fees matter and fees matter a lot. The best Vanguard funds. So we do need some criteria to look for before we go to Vanguard and start taking a look at some funds. The first thing we're going to want to know is what is it? So we'll look at the fund and go, okay, what is this fund and what is it actually tracking? We then want to look at the long-term performance because as we saw, index fund investing is a long-term strategy. Looking at it for one year or three year, it's kind of pointless. We want to look at the maximum long-term performance. And then the other thing, as we saw, is fee fees because fees do matter. So now we've got our criteria, let's take a look at the Vanguard website. So we'll be looking at the Vanguard website in the UK. However, if you are from America or Australia, it's still worth watching because you can use the same methodology that I'm about to show you on the American website, the Australian website, or any other Vanguard site that you may be using. I'll just use the UK as an example. So I don't know if you know this, but Vanguard actually created the index fund. It was the founder, John C. Bogle, which in the 1970s actually created the index fund. So what we'll do is under what we offer, we'll be looking for the index and active funds and also the ETFs. So the first question you may ask is, okay, what's the difference between an index fund and an ETF? And for all intents and purposes, they're pretty much the same thing, which is why we'll be looking at both. The only difference is that even Vanguard say themselves, ETFs are very similar to the index funds, but they trade on a stock exchange. So it just means that you can buy ETFs multiple times a day, where with index funds, you can only buy it once a day. But because this is a long-term strategy and we're probably only buying these once a month anyway, it doesn't really matter. So they're pretty much, think about them as the same thing. So first of all, we're gonna to go to refine and we're on mutual funds because an index fund is actually a mutual fund, which an ETF isn't. Let's just take a look at stocks. Um, I can do bonds and other things on a different video. So I'll take off bonds, blended and money market and between index and active, we're just looking at index funds. So this will now show 15 index funds. Same thing for ETFs. So let's just refine this and we've got ETFs, we'll take off bonds, we'll take off active, and it's gonna leave us with 13 funds. And you can now see it's broken up by location. So we've got Europe funds, global funds, UK funds, Japan, Asia, USA and emerging markets. And if you actually read the fund title, again, it can be categorized by small cap, medium cap, large cap, and mixed. And cap is basically capitalization. So that's small companies, medium companies, and large companies. And then the other category would be income funds versus accumulation. Income funds is where they'll choose big companies that pay dividends. And accumulation is when all the company's dividends are reinvested back into the fund. And we've also got the developed world and emerging markets. So emerging markets is basically economies that are progressing. They don't yet have a full financial system, so it is higher risk. And to make this super simple, what I would do myself when I'm looking at an index fund or an ETF, I would only use a global fund or a United States fund. And this has to do with risk. With global, you're pretty much spreading the risk across the world. Or if you are gonna choose just one country, then the United States is gonna be the best one. It's the number one economy in the world, and it has a lot of the biggest companies. I wouldn't really go for things like emerging markets, as these are just smaller countries, so it's gonna be much higher risk. Let me just give you a quick example why you may not want to choose Europe or maybe something like the UK. So I'll bring up the UK FTSE 100. So this is the 100 largest companies in the UK. And you can see this is the performance over the last 30 years. And you can see where it is right now is the same level that it was at 
in the year 1999. So if you'd invested 20 years ago in the UK stock market, the level is exactly the same, 20 years of wasted gain. And this is why I generally wouldn't go for UK funds, Europe funds, and this is why the US or global are gonna be the best choices. So in the global funds, we've got just the developed world all cap, but if we're gonna do global, we might as well include everything and emerging markets as well. We've got a developed world, but this is a new fund, so it's not gonna have a lot of data. I probably wouldn't look at that. We've got developed world excluding the UK, but I'd rather include everything. So we've only got two left. A global all cap index fund. So this is perfect. This is something that we'd wanna look at. And then we've got a global small cap fund, but just choosing small companies. Obviously it's the small companies that are a lot more likely to go out of business than the large ones. So this for me is just too risky. And you can see as well, it's got a top risk score of six. So in fact, out of all these index funds, there's only one that's worth looking at. And then let's go to the United States and in the US on the Vanguard UK site, there's only actually one fund. So this makes it easy. So we'll take a look at this one as well. And looking at the ETF section of the website as well. So we're just going to look at the global and USA ETFs. So in global, there's only three. We've got an all world high dividend one, but generally I wouldn't look at just the high dividend one. I'd want the accumulation ones because they're much better. So we've got a FTSE all world ETF. So this sounds perfect. And then there's a developed world ETF, but I think just the full one is gonna be better. And then when it comes to the United States, there's two options. We've got a North America fund, which is probably worth looking at. And we've got an S&P ETF, which again is definitely worth looking at. So this leaves us with five funds to choose from. We have got two index funds and three ETFs. So remember our criteria at the beginning, we're gonna be looking at what exactly is this fund, what is its long-term performance, and what are the fees? So let's do it. So this first one was the FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund. So what exactly is this? The fund seeks to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap Index. This is comprised of large, medium, and small companies in developed and emerging markets. And it gives you a good definition of emerging markets. So the emerging markets are the countries that are progressing towards becoming advanced, but they've usually shown some development in financial markets, and they have some kind of existence of a stock exchange. And this is made up of 6,800 stocks, so very diversified, and its charge, its fees, is 0.23%, which is not too bad. So we pretty much know what this fund is. So let's look at the price and performance. The first chart is the actual fund price itself. What I look for is this table, and I look for cumulative and because we're looking for long-term performance. So we don't really need to look at the one month, three month, year to date, one, three, five. We kind of want to look at the maximum. 30 year would be great, 20 year if possible, but a lot of them only have 10 year. And in fact, this fund has only been going for three years, so it doesn't have five year or 10 year. We can see that it is tracking close to its index. So the NAV price is the fund, it's the net asset value, and the actual index it's tracking is the benchmark. So we can see just 1% difference, just 1% difference, 1%, that's pretty close, that's pretty close. So we can make an assumption that it's gonna be pretty, the five year performance is gonna be pretty close to 86% and the 10 year at 200. So if this fund did do 200% over 10 years, then that's about 20% a year which is excellent. That is Warren Buffett sized performance. In general, as a benchmark, we want the performance to be over 10% a year. So 20% is excellent. So, so far, it looks like the long-term performance is pretty good. It's spread over the world and, and the fee is only 0.23%. So far, so good. Next up, we have the US Equity Index Fund, and this is accumulation, so this is where the di dividends are reinvested. So first up, what exactly is this? 
So this fund seeks to track the performance of the S&P's total market index. So it's comprised of large, medium, small, and micro-sized companies. So it's got three and a half thousand US stocks. What are the fees? So the fee is 0.1. So this is actually really low. So from a fee point of view, it's great. And then we just need to look at the long-term performance. So the cumulative long-term performance, we do have over 10 years of worth of data, and this is 343%. So let me just work out what this is per year by dividing the two. So this works out at a whopping 34% per year for the last 10 years. So this is outstanding. So this is a very, very good fund. The US equity fund, it's got low fees, high diversification and excellent performance. Moving on, we've now got the three ETFs. So we've got the FTSE All World ETF. So what exactly is this? This seeks to track the performance of the FTSE All World Index. It's comprised of large, medium sized stocks. So this is just large and medium sized in developed and emerging. The fees is 0.22, so not quite as good as the last one. And let's look at its long-term performance. Cumulative, so it's only up to the five year. If it tracks pretty close, then we can probably make assumptions on the 10 year. So let me just work out what the 10 year would be. So this would work out at a 15%, which is still pretty good Anything above 10% is, is really good. So 15% per year and your charges are only 0.22. So this is pretty, this is a pretty strong fund, but not as good as the last one. Next up, we have the FTSE North America ETF. So what exactly is this? Aims to track the performance of the FTSE North America index and it's comprised of large size stocks. So this is just large companies in America. And you can see there's 665 stocks. It's got pretty low fees, only 0.1%. And let's take a look at the long-term performance. So cumulative performance of the 10 year, if it's tracking pretty close to its index, I can probably make an assumption on its 10 year. Let me just work this out. So this would give a 26% which again, 26% per year is an excellent performance. So again, this is a very strong fund. And then last up, we have the S&P 500 ETF. So what exactly is this fund? Aims to track the performance of the S&P 500 index, and it's comprised of large size stocks in America. So you can see it's 500 plus stocks. Its fees are really low, 0.07. So that's the lowest in fees that we've seen. And what about long-term performance? We don't have a 10 year, we have up to the five year. So let me just, if it's tracking pretty close to its index, which is good, we can make an assumption on the 10 year and this would be 28%, 0.5, 29 29% almost again. So this is potentially one of the best ones as well. So it's got, these fees are only 0.07 and it's got a nearly 30% return per year. So this is excellent. So now you have the methodology, you can use this on any Vanguard or any website that offers index funds and you know what to look for. So let's finish with the choices by some top finance channels, starting with Graham Stephan. So Graham Stephan's one of the biggest finance YouTubers out right now. He's got 2.4 million subscribers and we can see which index funds he uses himself. The first one is the Vanguard Total US Stock Market. So the ticker is VT Sachs. So this will be only available from the US Vanguard website. And you can see it's 10 year performance is about 15%. So this is really, really good. And the other one he uses is the Vanguard Total International, VTI X. So this is gonna be tracking stocks from all around the world. And it only went up to five years, which had a 6%. So this one I would say is not that good. Next up, we have Mama Furfur, and this is Jennifer. She's one of the uh, top finance channels in the UK. 
And one of the funds she uses is the Vanguard 100 Life Strategy Accumulation Fund, which has done pretty well, it's got 14% over the last five years. So what I'll do guys, the funds that have been used by Graham and also Jennifer, I'll put links to those in the description below the video so you can check those out. But in summary, this is basically it. So when it comes to funds, this is what I'd personally do myself. You are free to make your own investment decisions, but this is what I would look at. I'd look at either a world index fund or a US stock total fund or an S&P 500 index. I'd be looking at the long-term performance and also what fees it has. You obviously wanna make it tax efficient. So in the UK, you'd wanna put this through a stocks and shares ISA. In America, I believe it's called a Roth RIA. So just note in the UK with the index funds, you can buy fractional shares, which means you can buy just a pound's worth if you want, where the ETFs, you have to buy the full amount. If one share is 50 pounds, you can only buy 50 pounds worth. So just bear that in mind. Check your own country to see what they do. So there you are guys, you now know the strategy that we're using for index fund investing, which is basically a long-term approach using compounding to build wealth. We went through the best Vanguard index funds and ETFs of what to look for and what to avoid. And you also saw the top choices being used by some of the biggest finance channels. So I hope you found this useful and it helps on your own investing journey. I just have one favor to ask, and that is if you found anything in this video useful, be sure to click that like button below as it really does help. It's much appreciated and every like does help. If you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to click the subscribe button. I do have some great videos coming up that you don't wanna miss. And if you've got any questions or any comments about Vanguard index funds, then simply post them below now. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.